Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So for today's head-to-head -head comparison, we're going to take a look at the 2024 Acura TLX Type S and the 2024 Audi S4. Both of these are performance-oriented style and luxury-focused sedans that have a lot to offer. So we are going to start off with the Audi S4, where this has a starting MSRP right around $41,000. For the S4 model, that can climb up to 67,000, just depending on the options that you go with. For the Type S, the TLX starts right around $45,000, and it can creep up to just over $60,000 for the Type S. So with some additional options, the Audi can cost more, but they do have a similar price point in general. Now, starting off with the horsepower, for the Audi, this is powered by a three liter turbocharged V6 paired to an eight speed automatic. It pumps out 349 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. For the Type S, this has a three liter turbocharged V6 paired to a 10 speed automatic with 355 horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque. Both of these are all wheel drive. The TLX weighs in right around 4,200 pounds. For the Audi, it's at 3,800 pounds, so a little bit less, providing the zero to 60 with a quicker time at 4.4 versus 4.6, and top speed is going to be at 155 for both of these models. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, they have a much different look. We have the hexagonal grille for the Audi. There's also a forward-facing camera, all the sensors. This particular model does feature adaptive cruise, and of course it has LEDs for all of the lighting. For the Acura, there's a forward-facing sensor for the adaptive cruise, parking sensors, no camera, but you'll notice too a little bit more sporty of a design for the lower section of the bumper with the gloss black on both sides there and a little bit sleeker of a grill. We do have some similar hood lines coming down both of these two, but definitely a, a little bit larger of a presence with that massive grill versus the thin one on the Acura. Now, as we move to the side, the Acura has a really nice color combo, very bold too, especially with these bronze wheels and the massive red Brembo brakes. Now for the Audi, you do get a large set of red brake calipers as well with a very nice wheel, a little bit more luxury focused for that particular design. You can get some other wheel choices, of course, too. Now for the side mirrors, we have the turn signal and then turn signal a little bit smaller for the Acura there. Both sides are kind of similar. I'd say it looks a little bit shorter for the rear window there versus on the Acura where it flows a little bit more towards that trunk space. So a little bit different of a design there. Some crisp lines too that run down the side for this Audi. Some smooth lines around the door handles. There's also another crisp line at the height of the door handle and in the lower section for the Acura. So slightly different of course, just a little bit different styling. For the Audi, there's a very small trunk mounted spoiler, LED taillights of course with the backup camera, and then the quad tip dual exhaust with the sensors on both sides there. Now over on the TLX, we have a very large trunk mounted spoiler. There's the backup camera, LED taillights, and then the quad tip exhaust with some more aggressive design for the diffuser there, finished off in gloss black. Now in order to gain access to the cargo space, you can use that button there. For the TLX, pretty large amount of space. You can fold down the back seats as well, and you do have a little bit of storage underneath the floor where you could place some smaller items. So for a practical sedan, it has a good amount of space. Now over on the Audi, that button is located up underneath where we do have a good bit of space too. You can fold the back seats down. You do have to do that from the interior, however. And then you have storage bins on both sides. There's a hook here where you could place your bags. And as far as storage underneath the floor goes, you get a spare tire and a little bit more room. So that's very nice to have. I know a lot of people do like having that spare tire option. And so as we work our way to the back, you'll notice that the door handles on this actually open up towards the sky. They don't pull straight out, which is a little bit different of a design. And for this particular model, this is closing in on being fully loaded. So with all the carbon fiber and Alcantara, just some different options that you can go with. Very nice layout for the door panel though, and then the very nice design for the seats. Now you'll see there's storage nets. We have temperature, you have your climates and some auxiliaries. And right in the middle, there's a little bit of storage as well as the cup holders on the front section there. And you can also fold down this middle seat if you need to gain access into the back. 
As far as headroom goes, I have about an inch or so. And then this is pretty bulky in the middle if you do have a middle passenger. But for its overall size, I'm fairly comfortable at five foot 10. So I could easily ride around in the back for the smaller size that that is. As we work our way to the Acura, you can actually lock and unlock this with the back door handle. So that's very nice. And then for this interior, very bold with all of the red, a little bit different of a layout there. And then for this interior, I would say it's kind of the same. I have a, about the same amount of headroom. You have auxiliaries, climate adjustments right in the middle there, or the vents. And then you have a little bit of storage with cup holders. You cannot fold down the middle as it's connected to this side that I'm sitting on. But there's storage nets. You have that bulge in the middle, but it's not quite as intrusive here with the vent. So it doesn't curve down like it does over on the Audi. But about the same as what you would expect for the sizing of these vehicles. Now up front for the Acura, we have memory seats, trunk release, side mirror adjustments, which are power folding. And I do have a full detailed review of this exact model that you can check out. I'm going through all this fairly quickly today. So if you wanna see those in greater details, check out that video. Now we have a really nice design for the steering wheel. We have controls for your volume, Bluetooth, you have distance, pacing, and then you have some info over on that right side that you can go through. Ironically, the rest of this digital gauge cluster is not configurable. So this is all the info that you get to scroll through and monitor. Now there's paddle shifters on this too. We have head up display, e-brake, along with parking sensors, defrosters, a few controls there. There is a head up display and that large infotainment system is not a touchscreen system. So you have to use everything down below to further go through this. You do get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, there's interior lighting too. So you can quickly go through all that and you have a split style for info on that right side. All the climate adjustments are laid out very nicely. There's heated and ventilated seats, few different driving modes that you can get into as well. Gear selector right in the middle. You have volume, wireless charging, a little bit of storage as well as the glove box there. And then up top, you do get a sunglass holder. And as far as visibility goes, very open with the amount of glass on both sides. So again, check out the full review. I have one on this. I also have one on the S4 too. So as we work our way to uh, this vehicle now, for the door panel, we have memory seating adjustments, trunk release, side mirror adjustments, which are also heated too. So very similar. And then we have a very nice sporty style seat as well as steering wheel for this model. I'm not sure if you can tell right off the bat, this is a little bit louder than the Acura. Now we have some controls on this left side. So this digital gauge cluster is a little bit more configurable. You can actually go through quite a lot. And if you wanna bring up this in full screen, just click view and now you can go through everything a little bit larger. So it's nice to see that. Heated steering wheel, which the Acura is missing. Paddle shifters on the backside. We have some headlight adjustments, storage down below. This does not have a head up display. And then right in the middle, we do get a touch screen system. So you can go through all this fairly quickly in using all of these controls and scrolling through all of these apps and all of this information. I think it is much nicer to have a touchscreen system. This is much closer than on the Acura, which is farther back in the dash. Some people may argue it's just stuck on and it, it doesn't fit or look right. The Acura is a little bit more integrated, but we get the touchscreen, which I think I would take over that. Dual zone, all the climate adjustments are right in the middle. We even have different driving modes like you saw on the Acura. Engine start stop, there's parking sensors, you can turn the screen off. A Little bit of storage with some auxiliaries. We have the gear shifter, which is much different of course than on the Acura. Volume adjustments, wireless charging is tucked away in the armrest, which is adjustable. And then storage in the glove box there. Up top we have some dome lights, no sunglass holder up top though. And then visibility is about what you would expect. Very similar for this model. And again, check out the full review to go through all of that in greater details. But that's a look at the exteriors as well as the interiors. Let's get both of these sporty luxury sedans out on the road and see how they drive. Behind the wheel of the Audi now in dynamic setting and the manual mode, here we go. Definitely has a good sound to it for this factory exhaust. So it definitely provides you with a little bit more of that sporty feel with how loud that exhaust is. But behind the wheel, we have the perforated leather, really nice grips on both sides 
for this S steering wheel. And it's a nice place to be. Very open feeling for the size of this. I love all of the materials. Again, all of that are options, of course. And these paddles and shifts are very smooth and responsive. So for a luxury focused sedan, you get the performance that you want with this vehicle too. It drives very nice. I've been able to drive these, of course, having the full reviews that you can check out. And I do own an Audi myself, uh, but this is, this is very nice. Much newer than the Audi that I own. And I like this interior. It's also quiet too. It's nice that you can tone it back. So if you wanna go into comfort, it will make the exhaust note not quite as loud. You can hear it slightly under that acceleration and it's a really nice place to be. I like the layout of everything. There's not a whole lot of controls, which just makes it look not as cluttered, but it is also easier to go through all of the physical buttons that are available for this interior. And obviously we have all wheel drive. So driving in inclement, inclement weather like this gives you a little bit more satisfaction with being able to drive it in this weather. You have more grip going to all of the wheels too but definitely a great place to be, something that you can absolutely daily drive and take from point A to point B and just have a very nice sporty drive while you do it. But let's go ahead and hop into the TLX. And behind the wheel of the TLX now, this is a very, very fun sporty car. It is something that has certainly uh, outweighed anything that I previously thought about it. I've never really been around the Acura, but I didn't really have a high bar set for this car just because I hadn't been around one, but after driving it, and especially with the full review video, taking it through some twisty roads, I am certainly impressed with not only the performance that this sedan has, but just how fun it is to drive on a daily basis and for the price, what you are getting from this sporty style sedan. Now, like I showed earlier, no touch screen. That is probably the only negative that I have with this vehicle. After driving it for a few days, everything else is just very easy to use and go through. So I, I don't, I like this. I think it's a really, really good competitive option that you wouldn't really necessarily think about when you're looking at Audi, Lexus, BMW, Acura's not really like in those three, of course, but this is a really cool luxury focused, kind of under the radar luxury performance sports car. So I really don't have any complaints with this. Drive modes are very, very distinctive. So they are very functional, which is great. I mean, it's, it's well balanced. I think it has plenty of power and just to drive it every day has been super comfortable as well. So back from the test drive now between the Audi S4 and the Acura TLX Type S. Honestly, I am torn after driving these back to back which one I would pick. I've been driving the TLX for the last couple days and it has honestly surprised me with the performance style driving that I've done with this car. Check out the full review to see taking this through the twisties. I didn't do that as much today in the S4, but I have been able to drive that on some twisty roads in the past. Honestly, these are both incredibly fun. Basically, it just boils down to, do you want brand of having an Audi or do you want to have something a little bit more under the radar with the uh, Acura, but still get that performance that's underneath that skin that you would get in a similar brand or luxury vehicle like the Audi. So honestly, these are both incredibly fun to drive. I do like the color combo with this particular Acura. Definitely bold and something that you just don't see a lot. So it does kind of give it away with that color combo, but honestly, it is hard to pick. I like the touchscreen system versus not touchscreen. I like the interior layout a little bit more. We don't have that traditional gear selector like a lot of people do like. It's a tough one. I like Audi, but I haven't been around Acura quite as much. And honestly, this is giving other luxury brands a run for its money. With its pricing, it can come in less expensive than the Audi and you get a lot of performance, you get a great daily driver. Both of these are going to honestly 
be great choices just depending on what you like. So comment down below, would you take the Acura or would you take the Audi? I also hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a huge thumbs up. Check out both full detailed reviews. Again, if you wanna see everything in greater details, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.